The area of Abu Simbel, which is located 280 kilometers south of Aswan, not only contains the great temple of Abu Simbel or the temple of Ramesses II, but also contains the small temple, which is located very close to the great temple. This small temple is located around 150 meters away from the, from the great temple, as King Ramesses II wanted the two temples to be always seen together, as a sign for his eternal love for his wife, Queen Nefertari. Today, we're going to talk about the small temple. This temple was given several names. It was known as the small temple since it was much smaller in size than the great temple. It was also known as the uh, northern temple as it is located to the north of the great temple. It also had two other names which were the temple of goddess lady of Ipshik as uh, it was dedicated for the worshipping of goddess Hathor as the lady of Ipshik. Uh, not only that, but it was also known as the temple of Nefertari, since Nefertari was worshipped as a goddess inside the temple. This tradition actually was started by King Amenhotep III, who was the first king ever to make a temple for his wife to be worshipped. He made the temple for Queen Ti to be worshipped as Hathor Tifnut in Nubia. This same tradition was continued by his successor, King Ramesses II, who made this temple for the worshipping of his wife, Queen Nefertari, to be worshipped as Hathor Lady of Ipshik. The magnificent facade of this rock-cut temple takes the trapezoid shape, measuring 30 times 13, imitating the pylon. It does not form an exact right angle with the main axis of the temple. The facade was decorated from the top by a cavetto cornice which is nowadays missing. Not only that, but the facade is decorated by two groups of three colossal statue that are, statues that are separated by the large gateway. Each statue is carved in a separate ins inscribed recess that was inscribed by names and titles of King Ramesses II. The statues are more than 10 meters high and they represent the king and his queen. The entrance to the temple is carved in the middle of the facade. It is decorated by a line of cobras at, at the top, while its jams are decorated by hieroglyphic inscriptions giving names and titles of the king. Flanking the entrance from either side are three colossal statues. These statues are representing Ramesses II flanking two figures of his wife, Queen Nefertari. The two statues flanking the entrance represent Ramesses II in a standing position, wearing once the white crown and once the double crown. He is represented wearing the Shindit royal kilt and his shown left leg stepped forward. These statues are followed by two other statues of Nefertari, who is represented at the same size as her husband, which was pretty unusual, but it actually confirms the importance of Nefertari in the temple. Nefertari is represented also in a standing position. She is wearing the uh, emblem of goddess Hathor above her tripartite hair wig. She is shown wearing a tight-fitting dress and she is represented holding the sistrum in one hand while the other hand is stretched near her thigh. She is also represented left leg stepped forward. The statues of Queen Nefertari are followed by two other statues of Ramesses II. On one side, he is wearing the, dub, the white crown, while on the other side, he is shown wearing the Shuti ceremonial crown. Between the legs of the six colossal statues are small statuettes depicting their children. Each of the colossal statues is carved in its own recess, decorated by lines of hieroglyphic inscriptions giving names and titles of King Ramesses II. The six colossal statues are all represented left leg stepped forward as if they are marching towards the Nile River where the temple was once overlooking. On the top of the six colossal statues and right in the center of the facade is an undressed piece of stone which scholars believe that should have been carved and coated with a layer of pilaster to imitate the head of goddess Hathor as a cow. But this undressed piece of stone was considered to be never finished. This slide here shows the magnificent facade of the small temple of Abu Simbel and as we said, 
Uh, it is decorated by the six colossal statues of King Ramesses II and his wife Queen Nefertari, who is identified with Goddess Hathor as uh, she was worshipped in the temple as Hathor Lady of Ipshik. As for the interior design of the temple, it is smaller in size uh, when compared to the great temple of Akusimbal as it only contains of a single pillared hall which leads to the vestibule which in turn leads to the sanctuary. The doorway leads to a hall of pillars decorated by six pillars arranged in two rows of three. These pillars are Hathoric pillars as they depict representations of Goddess Hathor as a female with the ears of a cow and her tripartite hair wig. Upon these pillars, Ramesses II is represented while making offerings to various deities. This slide shows the interior of the squared pillared hall, which is decorated by six pillars uh, arranged in two rows of three. These pillars are known to be Hathoric pillars as they are decorated by representations of goddess Hathor with the female face, two ears of a cow and her tripartite hair wig. The pillars are decorated by scenes of Ramesses II making offerings to different deities. As for the roof, it was once decorated by flying vultures which are now in a very bad condition. This slide gives a closer look uh, to show the Hathoric pillars with the representations of goddess Hathor uh, depicted on them. As for the decoration of the hall, the scenes are simpler and less colorful than those of the great temple. On the entrance wall, the king accompanied by his queen in an unusual scene is shown once smiting a Libyan in the presence of Rahorohti and once smiting a Nubian in the presence of Amun-Ra. It is unusual for the queen to accompany the king during these smiting scenes. However, she appears with him as it is, in fact, her temple. On the left-hand wall, from left to right, are scenes showing Ramesses II in the presence of Hathor. Also, a magnificent scene representing Ramesses II crowned by both Horus and Set. Also, the queen appears in the presence of Anubis while Ramesses II is presenting an image of Ma'at to God Amun-Ra. Moving to the, the other wall, which is uh, the right-hand wall from right to left, are scenes of Ramesses II making offerings to Ptah. Also, Ramesses II appears in the presence of God Herishef. As for the queen, she appears in the presence of Goddess Hathor while Ramesses II is making offerings in the form of a cup to God Rahur Ahti. As for the rear wall of the hall, it depicts the queen while in the presence of Hathor on the left side and Mut on the right side. The slide shows the magnificent scene on the left-hand wall where the king is being crowned by Horus and Set. This is considered to be an important scene because the king here is crowned by both powers and forces of upper and lower Egypt. Here the king appears while making offerings in front of God Ptah, who is seated and identified by his skull cap. This slide shows the back wall of the hall, where the queen is actually making offerings in front of a seated figure of Goddess Hathor identified by the emblem above her head. The queen is holding in one hand a bunch of lotus flowers, while on the other hand she is holding the sistrum, one of the emblems of goddess Hathor, who is considered to be also a goddess of music. On the other side, the queen would be represented making offerings, but this time not in front of Hathor, but rather in front of goddess Mut. This back wall also contains three doorways that lead to the narrow vestibule which gives access to two small side rooms and to the sanctuary of the temple. Above the entrances of the rooms are fine reliefs of Goddess Hathor coming out of the marshes of the delta as a cow and worshipped once by the king Ramesses II and once by his queen. This slide shows the back wall of the hall with one of the three doorways that lead to its vestibule. In the middle of the back wall of the vestibule is a doorway that leads to the sanctuary of the temple. 
The back wall of the sanctuary is decorated by a recess whose roofs are supported by two sistra. In this recess is a figure represented in high relief for goddess Hathor as a cow, and under her head is a representation of Queen Nefertari as she is represented under the head of Hathor in order to be under her complete protection. On the left-hand wall of the sanctuary, the queen appears while making offerings in the form of incense to both Mut and Hathor. As for the right wall, the king appears while making offerings in the form of incense and libation in front of his own image and that of Queen Nef Nefertari. Thus, the king here is represented as a priest making offerings to himself as a god and to his, to his queen as a goddess. The last slide shows the recess at the back wall of the sanctuary whose roof is supported by two sistra and a representation of goddess Hathor in the form of a cow while uh, under her head is a representation of Queen Nefertari in order to be under her complete protection. Thank you all for watching.